Hello and welcome to another Streaming Media East Connect session. I'm Eric Schumacher Rasmussen. I am the VP and editor of Streaming Media Magazine and StreamingMedia.com. And we are in the midst of our biggest virtual event yet. We've got 33 panels and presentations this week and early next week, followed by the Content Delivery Summit next Tuesday. So we've got an action packed almost week and a half here. And uh, we cover every, we cover the gamut here at Streaming Media. Uh, and that's what we're trying to do with this conference as well. Everything from production and encoding to distribution, monetization, and everything in between. Uh, as usual, all of these panels will be archived on our YouTube channel uh, within a day or two of uh, them wrapping up. And you can also find them uh, by going to our streaming media website and clicking the videos link on the home page. As I said, this is our fourth virtual event and uh, it's not our last. We're going to be doing another streaming media connect in August, but we do plan to be in Huntington Beach in November for Streaming Media West. So keep your eyes open for information about that. Steve Nathans Kelly is putting links to that and other relevant information in the chat. Speaking of the chat, the chat will be open during this conversation, but if you have any questions for our panelists, I ask you to put them in the Q&A tab at the bottom of your screen. That just makes it a little easier for us to keep track of those questions as they come in. Before we jump in, I'd like to thank our diamond sponsor, Signiant, for sponsoring Streaming Media East Connect, and we have a brief video message from them now. When the director calls action. And action. When the game is on. Up, or it's time to save the universe again. Media Shuttle is there. Trusted by more than 25,000 media companies, Media Shuttle delivers, making it easy and secure to send any size file anywhere fast. The journey begins with Media Shuttle portals, customized and branded for any project and designed to be so easy, your end users will love it. All while giving operations teams complete control through a simple yet powerful admin interface. Add users, set permissions, customize file delivery specs, and report on all activity. Blast off with proprietary acceleration technology. Media Shuttle moves your content anywhere in the internet connected world at hyper speeds. Along the way, your files are protected. Our commitment to enterprise grade security has made Media Shuttle a preferred tool with Hollywood studios, major sports leagues, broadcasters, and more. With Media Shuttle, your files are never handed over to Signiant. File movement is orchestrated between the end user's workstation and your storage, whether on-prem or in the cloud. Your IT team simply provisions your storage, connecting it to the Media Shuttle cloud service, and Signiant handles the rest. Get started on your Media Shuttle journey today, a journey without limits. I'd also like to, like to thank the sponsor of this panel, LiveU, and LiveU's Dave Building will be joining us in this discussion. We've got a great group of panelists to talk about the topic at hand, and that's enhanced sports and esports experiences. Uh, Jeff Jacobs from Venn TV was going to be our moderator. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, he wasn't able to make it. Uh, Venn, if you're not familiar with, is a terrific new esports network. I think Jeff describes it as MTV for esports. So if you haven't checked that out, please do. But we've got an incredible range of people talking about this topic today. We've got content creators who are social media and web only. We've got one of the world's largest broadcasters. We've got a couple of OTT only services. And finally, uh, we've got a groundbreaking service that combines esports and real sports, as well as someone talking about the technical side of things uh, from live use production perspective. So. I'm going to ask each of the panelists to introduce themselves, talk a little bit about what you do, and let's start with Dave Belding from LiveU. Dave? Well, good afternoon, everyone. Welcome. Uh, I'm Dave Belding, Sales Director for the Sports Team at LiveU. For those that don't know what LiveU does, we are an IP-based contribution, acquisition, and distribution, and production service provider, leveraging bonded cellular technology. Used extensively in news gathering, also used in various aspects of sports production from uh, linear broadcast to shoulder programming, uh, all kinds of various applications. So, 
that's it for me. Excellent. Thank you very much. And I'm relatively confident that among our panelists, we have some folks who have used LiveView products. I would hope um, so. Next up, Aaron Nagler. Uh, and Aaron, I forget, are you here representing Cheesehead TV LiveX or both? That would be. Okay, your mic's on. There, there we go. go. There you go. Definitely just representing myself there because I don't want to bring shame to That's anybody's right. name who I would utilize after that. I will say, Dave, you are correct as far as using Live View. When I started at Bleacher Report, all we ever did was use Live View in the field. That thing was a lifesaver. And that was well, a long time ago. That. I know you guys have come a long way since then. That was ages ago. Yes, Cheesehead TV is uh, baked into LiveX, I guess you could say, which is a streaming services company. Um, Live X was founded by Corey Banke, who is my co-founder at Cheesehead TV. We utilize Cheesehead TV at Live X as a kind of a proving ground for a lot of the technological stuff that we're playing around with, seeing how it works in the field, seeing how it works in the studio. Because if you're utilizing Cheesehead TV, you're going to an audience of a few thousand people at a time for each stream. It's fine if one of our producers, you know, messes up or the program crashes or whatever new piece of technology doesn't work. It's fine. Only a couple thousand people saw that rather than turning around and then say live X working with some major brand that has a couple million people watching it. In those instances, usually, usually the producers are able to turn around and go, Oh, I remember what happened when we were utilizing that on Cheesehead TV. I know the workaround. I know what the issue is. I can solve it and fix it right away. So Cheesehead TV likes to kind of exist in a space where I get to talk and watch football and communicate with Packers fans worldwide, which is obviously a lot of fun, uh, but it's also serious business in the world of trying to push narratives forward, storytelling forward, um, and kind of discover new avenues to connect with audiences around the world. Excellent. Next up is Pamela Duckworth from Fubo. Pam. Hey, how are you guys doing? Good, Thanks for good. having good me. Um, so I'm head of Fubo Sports Network. And that is um, a, a linear network that's uh, on platform and off platform. You can get it for free on Samsung TV, Roku, a bunch of devices up to, you know, potentially 75 million homes. But the mothership is Fubo TV, the OTT streaming service that is basically a cable replacement, but you don't need all the boxes. And that's a good Either. thing. Uh, next up, Kristen Scott from Fox Sports. Kristen. Hey everyone, um, I'm the director of count productions and storytelling at Fox Sports uh, on the digital side. So that means basically any original content that doesn't come from TV comes from my team of producers. So I'll keep it short and sweet. Very good. And Patrick Dees from the Fan Controlled Football League. And uh, I'm betting there may be some folks in our audience who just don't know yet what the fan controlled football league does. So I'm looking and forward to- I would be very excited if you joined video, but it's saying that the, uh, the host has, has stopped it. So I, I'm unable to- So I wasn't it. the only one. Thank goodness. Yeah, I see? thought I was messed up. <laughs> <laughs> Aha. Aha. Aaron's oh, using your Aaron. There we go. Hey, hello. Boom. Um, Patrick Dees, I'm co-founder and, and chief gaming officer of fan controlled football, which um, might be new to a lot of folks. We just had our first season. But it is very much, um, you know, the way Eric introduced it. It's traditional sports meets esports. It's a, it is if you reimagining football for the digital age, um, meaning you know we're taking the, it's Madden in real life, right? Fan control football means fans control every single aspect of what happens in the league, from branding decisions of the teams, the logos and the mascots to personnel decisions, real time drafts, and then it is this lean forward experience in real time. Fans are calling plays for actual, you know, hard hitting football uh, on the field, and so. Um, uh, we just had our first season. We're gearing up for season two. Excellent. Now, the entire premise of this discussion is that viewers are hungry for content and experiences that happen outside the games themselves, right? Um, and I'd just like to go around the, the room, so to speak, and ask your thoughts on that. You know, is the premise of our panel correct? Is our, our viewers that hungry for those sorts of experiences? Um, Pam, can I start with you? Sure. Sure. I mean, I think the viewers, they want anything they can get their teeth into, right? Like we're, we're so, I think it's TV viewers used to a screen jam, like we can read all the stats, we can do all that kind of stuff. So um, we are currently working on a bunch of different technical things that we're going to add to our live sports programming, as well as 
um, we're going to put into some of our originals. Um, I'm sure you've, you, it's been announced in the news already that we're going to do free to play, um, which is going to be a really fun fan engagement that, uh, you know, I'm going to do some of my originals live so that fans can ask like Gilbert Arenas or Terrell Owens questions right as we're shooting. Um, we also, I think you've heard, we're going to be introducing a uh, sports book in Q4. So that will also um, have us engaging with fans with some more original programming and stuff like that. So I think they'll take anything we can create for them. And I think anecdotally, like the, if the pandemic has taught us anything, it's when live sports shut down, people were grasping for alternative programming that still tangentially relates to sports. So we're creating original programming that has nothing to do with the actual game and is more so telling the stories, whether it's off the field or whether that's access to the actual players and coaches, um, whether it's creating a completely made up vote of who is the best fan base in all of college football. Um, people are fighting over these things and the game actually isn't even happening on TV. Um, so we saw that all of that take completely off in, in the past 15 or so months. It's interesting too. That's a great point as far as like the pandemic kind of driving, you can say innovation, but just a collective kind of, okay, what do we do now to create programming and create content where there's an obvious kind of where there's usually oversaturation, all of a sudden there was this opening where, okay, wh wh what do we got? What are your ideas? And for us, it was interesting because we had decided, Corey had the idea, my co-founder very early on, once everything got shut down, okay, well, we're just gonna, you know, we're initially gonna have kind of watch parties of old games online where we all gather and talk about them or tweet about them or what have you. And that extended to when the NFL got back on its feet and obviously we had a season. Whereas in the past we had done a watch party here or there, they became absolutely essential for a lot of our uh, our viewers and our, our regulars in a way that they had not been before. And it was because of things that had happened you know, prior to that, when things got shut down, all of a sudden there was an extension of community in a way that just hadn't been there before because we kind of all came together and collectively said, okay, what are we going to do every day? Because we all exist online, right? We all exist in this space and we're all obviously all here talking about sports. Well, sports go away. I think that was a really, I don't want to say fun time, but it was really challenging and exciting time as far as, okay, so how do we band together and continue to create content? And I think you've seen coming out and now we're finally opening up and leagues are coming back to somewhat normal. We see fans in the stands. Um, a lot of this innovation that happened when things shut down, I think is somewhat going to stick around. And I think that's pretty exciting. And for you, Aaron, I know that with Cheesehead TV and yes, I'm a fellow Cheesehead as well. Um, you know, you and Corey are able to provide with that watch party alternative uh, color commentary, co color commentary for the right. folks who are outside of the local market who can't stand Troy Aikman. Right. Uh, for oh, God, instance, let's not, let's not go there. Let's not. We don't need to cast aspersions to Kristen's talent. Come on now. <laughs> Come on, don't make me defend it here. Hey, hey, for the record, for the record, I defend Troy to the hill <laughs> all yes, the time. Yes, Aaron does. But here, but here's the here's but here's the thing, right? Because it's interesting you say that. Because you talk about second screen experiences or even drilling down to a third screen experience if you're talking gamification, right? Or I, I know a lot of, obviously, uh, Pam mentioned sports book and gambling is really, is only going to get bigger, right? We already know it's huge and it's only going to grow. Um, but for us, yeah, there, there is a sense of wanting an alternative play-by-play, -play, quote unquote. But we found as things went along, and it's interesting because I, I'd love to hear uh, Dave talk a little bit about um, sync and, you know, the idea of latency. And I know what an issue that is technically in the industry, but for us on the content side and forming this community, what we found a lot was people still wanted to listen to Troy, Kristen, you don't like that. Um, they still wanted to hear what the guys on TV said, but then they would, okay, they would have their initial reaction. And then, oh, I can't wait to see what happens with Aaron and Corey. Like, I know, oh, this, I felt, I experienced that. Now I get this other kind of extra morsel of entertainment to go along with it. And we're still pretty in sync, but we're always going to be a little bit behind when you're, when you're streaming in the streaming world. That's kind of how it works. And that really became a thing. All of a sudden, it was like, I don't want to call it fan theater, but people were like, oh, God, this huge play. What I can't wait to watch Aaron lose his mind because I have 
a few things that happen in the game of football, say like the three man rush that drive me insane. So they just wait to see my reaction. Um, I've heard, I that have heard really drove three, engagement. When I was shooting in his other studios, I could hear him and Corey screaming. Don't, okay, you don't. Like, all right, all right. Yeah, yeah I get, I get kind of loud. It's what happens when you're a former actor watching football. I don't can't help it. That'll, that'll happen, uh, Dave. We will definitely get to you talking about the, the some of those technical issues related to this. But but Patrick, your fan controlled football is based entirely on an outside the game experience. So obviously you believe that people are hungry for that. Yeah, very <laughs> much so. I think, um, you know, so I grew up, um, my father is like one of the best fathers in the Northern hemisphere. He's an amazing guy, but not the quintessential like sports guy, right? He was a drama nerd in high school and he was a choir guy. And so I actually learned how football works, the rules of football through playing Madden, through playing tech mobile back in the day. And so for me, the experience of like real-time play calling and that lean forward experience has always been coupled with football. It's always, it's always existed simultaneously. And so, you know, our hypothesis was that if we allow fans, we put fans in a position to be successful and gave them these decisions that they would, that football and, and football IQ with the advent of Madden and, um, you know, fantasy is higher than it's ever been before. And, and I think that it extends to, you know, more than, you know, American football, but yeah, it's the, the entire experience is, you know, that, that in, the interaction, they choose everything that goes on. And then the, the, it's gamified further in the sense that anybody can call a play, but everybody gets a vote, but not every vote is created equal. If Aaron's been calling plays since the beginning of the season, he's just been crushing it. And I just start today, his vote, he levels up, he earns experience, he levels up, we call it fan IQ. As he levels up, his vote carries a lot more weight. So, you know, his vote could be 40, 50, 60 times mine if I had just started um, calling. So again, there's all, all kinds of leaderboards and competition amongst fans and clans of fans. I love the, that idea is exactly what I was just talking about, the gamification of it, right? And you're already, the whole premise is controlling the game, but then you can take it to so many levels. That's one of the things we're going to be doing this off season. We're redoing our app and the idea of like, I mean, for us, it's very old school. Like you're sitting in the bar. Remember those games we used to have, like you'd be watching television in the sports bar, like the next play is going to be a pass. Next play is going to be a run. You're sure. taking it obviously to the next level. I want, I'm going to call what the next play is, which I absolutely love. That's brilliant. Now, Dave, so much of this outside the game content, uh, shoulder content, especially um, is enabled by technologies like live views. So could you talk a little bit about the demand you've seen for all that content, uh, particularly in the last year. I know everything is ramped up. Everyone likes to say that remote production in particular advanced five years in the last 15 months, right? Yep, absolutely. So uh, Live View has been used for, for many years for around the game programming, fan engagement, uh, player interviews, et cetera. Um, and that's a, that was a nice niche that it fit into very, for quite a long time. But then all of a sudden, there were no games. Yet there is still this demand for content. There are still fans out there wanting to hear from their stars, you know, the, the, the athletes or, you know, the coaches and, and still stay engaged with their favorite team. So um, the live view technology really allowed sports producers to feed that appetite, right? Um, when, when the pandemic hit and you couldn't, go into your production control room to produce a show, um, you had to find a workaround. And the, the whole uh, off-premise or cloud production type of uh, technology that has advanced considerably. Um, but with the live view, we were able to help our customers to do uh, NFL draft shows, for example. Dallas Cowboys last year did their entire draft show using our bonded cellular technology um, that they would not have been able to do otherwise. So it, it really put our technology more in the forefront. And, and really we became the show because there wasn't a game, right? So it, it, did, it did move us into that. And uh, the technology has come so far since I started with a company, I've been with LiveView about five years now and, and it's really advanced. The uh, cellular technology is just getting better and better. Uh, we're just now starting to see 5G. We're just now shipping 5G enabled equipment. Um, we're doing things like ultra low latency to address some of the some of the issues that have been out there forever with monetary technology. And, and that's just technology. It marches on. And it's just going to make the experience that much better. We're going to be able to deliver content 
from virtually anywhere um, and give the fans that behind the scenes look that they they don't have access to otherwise. Dave, that's right. a really interesting point as far as the idea of coming out of the pandemic and technology marching on regardless. One of the things that we um, kind of had been working on for a while, but really kind of got pushed to the forefront was something at LiveX called VVCR, uh, which allowed Corey and I to watch the games together in New York and Green Bay. Like he and I would literally be watching live from a stream in his home in Green Bay. And I was in New York City. And when I was in the studio, that made sense to me as a layman uh, because, yeah, I'm in a studio with tons of equipment, whatever. Corey literally has VVCR is this cloud service that we've been working on for a while that kind of we had to rely on given when everything shut down. All of a sudden I was in my living room watching the feed that he was watching in Green Bay with no latency whatsoever. And to me, that was the moment where I was like, oh, oh, the future's here. Like, this is not some far off world where, oh, we can all watch everything together live without latency, without delay. Oh, we're already there. Yeah. And that to me, again, as someone who I, I concentrate mostly on the content stuff, that was a real eye, eye opener. Mm -hmm. I bet your communities like loved having that experience, like watching the game along with people that allowed people to connect. I bet we saw you know, we allowed our communities to to co-stream. So every one of our teams is owned by uh, a celebrity in a different vertical, right? Like I was really inspired by Mark Cuban in the way that the Mavs are just kind of an extension of his personality. So we put a murderer's row up of, you know, ladies and guys that would just be huge personalities, like have a lot of swagger. So, you know, like Renee Montgomery, Quavo owns a team, Marshawn Lynch owns a team in the league. And so we we would not only work with their teams um, and, and allow them to co-stream, but a lot of like the, the actual Twitch influencers. So we saw these micro communities uh, pop up. They would talk over the game and, you know, obviously root for their team and talk trash about everybody else. And so we saw all of these different type experiences that you could just go watch with your people wherever you are. And it was, it was neat seeing people be able to connect like that during the course of the pandemic. You guys kill it on social too. I'll say that, man. Oh, I, 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 I'm serious. I remember running into a game out of nowhere. I was on my Twitter feed some random night last year and because I had read about it, but I'd never experienced it. And then sure. somebody retweeted and said, this is so awesome. And I was like, okay, I'll check it out. And, and I followed along and then I was like, oh, this is, this is great. And so that got me invested. And but and then once I started following, like your social team is amazing. They're so good. They're so, they're so engaged. They get a little, uh, they're, they're, it's like you're just, we've got four teams. We're expanding to six this last season, but it's essentially them just talking trash to each other all it's day long. Dude, it's great. It's <laughs> I, I encourage everyone to check it out. It is so much fun. It is so good. Kristen, as the the representative from the broadcaster in the room, could you talk about the kinds of content that that Fox has been working on and the kinds of content specifically that your fans, your viewers are looking for? Sure. Just, you know, kind of dovetailing off of that conversation about how the pandemic forced our hand, the broadcast team actually looked to us um, during the pandemic and said, hey, like, we need to keep Colin Cowherd on the air. We need to keep Undisputed on the air. Um, can you help us? So here we are uh, building complete control rooms in our garages and from our bedrooms um, to stream over 900 hours of live television to FS1 as a digital team. Um, so that's something we are super proud of and didn't even know we were capable of until we were asked to figure out a solution for. Um, but in terms of the, the kinds of programming that we're putting together from an original standpoint is, you know, a lot of the watch parties that, you know, Aaron talked about, um, I, I look back to 2015 and we were streaming Joel Klatt by himself on a couch watching the college football playoffs, um, and literally talking to himself and the fans for four plus hours. That was great, by the way. <laughs> I, I'll never forget that. You guys, you guys did the, the three quarterback Super Bowl stream too, right? The one with, yes. uh, yeah, exactly. you guys, right? Montana breeze and Favre. That so was <laughs> phenomenal. That was so great. I love it. And you fast forward five years and you have that kind of production and it just tells you like how we keep iterating upon the watch party. And then this year we were able to do it with Marshawn, Stefan Diggs, uh, Jimmy Johnson, Terry Bradshaw, uh, Eli Manning. So we, we keep increasing the production value of these watch parties and the star power of them to, to get people to watch along with us and, and also just listen to some great storytelling. 
um, while you listen to Troy actually call the game. Um, <laughs> well, Marshawn, and, just in general, I mean, I could listen to that guy read the phone book. I know. Absolutely, a thousand percent. Alive, and I was in the broadcast booth, and he, I've met Marshawn 27 times in my life, but he doesn't know my name. He just calls me Big Dog, he hits me in the chest. He's like, Big Dog, doesn't know my name, I'm sure of it. And I was like literally on camera, I was in the booth and he came up and punched me in the kidneys from behind, like while we're live and was like, what's up big dog? <laughs> Took my headset off and put it on and proceeded to talk about all kinds of things that um, are uh, very Martian, quintessential Marshawn, he's unbelievable. He's incredible. Um, but yeah, that, that's how we keep iterating upon those, those watch party second screen experiences, but we're also creating um, complete original programming around our marquee sports. We're bringing in young, fresh talent who have communities um, that were built on the internet, who they are used to engaging with on a minute by minute basis, who are obsessed with the data, obsessed with like how they're performing. And if, if you were to compare that to some of the, the linear talent we work with who are also great, they're like, I don't understand any of this, but this is where <laughs> these talent are, where they were born and where they grew up and built their fan bases. So we're investing in, in those types of talent like RJ Young and Ben Verlander uh, and Ryan Satin from a WWE perspective to, to create original shows that go a little bit deeper. Um, than the the than the broadcast on linear. Pam, how about Fubo? What are some of the specific uh, things that you're working on and finding are getting traction? So we um, acquired the rights, the um, exclusive OTT streaming rights to uh, Conmebol, which is the South American qualifiers on the road to Qatar for World Cup 2022. Now that's a mouthful. You all should be proud. I got through that. It's one. awesome. It's uh, well yeah. done. Thank you very well much. done. So we're doing it, um, this is kind of cool too. I have a pretty small staff, but we are going to be producing pre, halftime, live cut-ins, as well as post-game shows in English and in Spanish. Um, and that's gonna be on June 3rd, June 4th, and June 8th. That's gonna be like the first leg of the combo. Um, so that'll be going through 2021. And then during that time, that's where we're going to be introducing this uh, free-to-play technology that we have. So I think it's going to be kind of exciting uh, to see, you know, how people take to that. And uh, I think the fans will like it. Yeah. So that's, that's, that's the biggest thing I'm working on personally right now. Excellent. Let's, let's talk about gambling uh, because um, you know, it's kind of the elephant in the room. It's something that because of regulatory changes that are on the way or underway or have already happened is going to become even more important than ever to the sports broadcasting, the sports OTT experience. Um, where does that fit into each of your plans or each of what you are doing right now? It's funny because like that is something that Corey and I have been talking about and known the importance of for a number of years. Uh, a good buddy of mine, Nick Costas, who I worked with at Bleacher Report, he uh, now works with CBS and a number of other uh, entities he was way out ahead of this. And he always used to tell me, it's like, oh, you got to get on the betting tip. You got to get on the betting tip. And I was always, oh yeah, I know it's important, whatever. Now you fast forward and it is everything right now. It is only going to grow. It is only getting bigger. And I know I recognize its importance. It's hard for me to wrap around how to add something without being the, you know, the betting guru or what have you, because there's a million, right? It's everybody's got, it's like everybody, the, the draft, the NFL draft, everyone's got a mock draft. Well, everybody seemingly, every content area seemingly has their betting expert. So I think that's already a saturated marketplace. I think the key is gamification of it. And it's just extending what your visit to Vegas might be to an online experience wrapped inside whatever specific content you're creating. So for us, obviously, that's around the Green Bay Packers. And how can we gamify and or tap into whatever the betting kind of angle is for the Packers, whether that's the game itself or whether... Will Aaron Jones put on the shades on the, after he scores a touchdown and goes to the sideline? You know, some, something that connects to your team that you can then engage with the audience in that capacity. I think it's, like I said, I think it's such wide open fertile ground. It's hard to wrap your arms around it if you don't come from that world. And I think that's the biggest trick is finding something authentic, something that connects to your audience immediately, but doesn't feel like it's just kind of slapped on in a way that there is going to be easily dismissed. Yeah, and that, that's why we're leaning into non-gamblers 
to uh, into our gambling content, right? It's like you're intimidated by the concept of gambling. You don't know what a spread means. You don't know what an over or under means. <laughs> You don't know what a money line is. It sounds um, like a conversation with my father. That's good. Yeah, That's good. Right? <laughs> um, it's exactly that. We want to make it approachable, right? So it's like we, we have our gambling experts who live and breathe this stuff. And we have our non-gamblers who are like, hey, like I'm just getting into this world. Want to come make a, a $10 bet with me and, and let's ride it together and see what happens. Um, we're trying to make it approachable uh, for, from that standpoint. And then we're integrating it into all of our second screen experiences, from an overt and a non-overt uh, standpoint, just graphically on a screen, like, yeah. right, well, let's, let's casually get into this, this conversation. Um, and then we're on the more intense side, creating full original programming around gambling with our product. That's talk the line. Um, that's our, our gambling product, our show that, that we use to specifically talk all things gambling on any given event or sport. Um, so we're, we're leaning in hard with box bet. I think that's really smart making it approachable. We, you know, so much of this was coming in hot for our first season, but we focused on, on just that, like the, you know, alternative solutions that like, um, that, that a Twitch audience would just know and understand. There's a currency that you earn on Twitch called channel points, which are, it's just like a frequent flyer mile. You watch for a few minutes, you start earning channel points and we would let them uh, not only peer to peer bet, but also make, uh, you know, um, predictions and you could bet a certain amount of your channel points on a prediction and you know we saw you know tens of millions of channel points bet over the course of you know six games and so um, I think that's a that's one of our key learnings was that if you can make it approachable that you know people are going to engage with it. I like that you're making it where they live too. the idea of channel points and making it a currency that they recognize that's yeah. smart that's good. Dave I want to get your thoughts on this specifically again from the technical side because you talked about well, I think Aaron first brought up latency, but obviously as we move forward in this world, latency and ultra low latency become crucial. And we had a great panel yesterday talking about 5G and how that's going to completely change the game in terms of micro betting and the ability to, to, to bet on, on things like Aaron just said in real time. Um, but what sort of strides are you seeing and what sort of things still need to happen for, um, for that ultra low latency to really get deep penetration? I think it's uh, primarily the uh, advent of 5G and getting more networks, uh, making those available to, the, to uh, the users of our equipment. 5G brings a lot of promise in terms of additional bandwidth, obviously, uh, but latency is a big issue, right? The more bandwidth you have, the lower latency you can have. Um, so at LiveView, we're looking at ways to knock down the technical barriers in terms of connecting people. Uh, so you talk about people that are betting uh, in different locations, being able to uh, interact with those folks. You know, we're, we're looking to deliver the technology to make that uh, a seamless process. One thing that's interesting that came up for us last year and this year, um, we do a, again, this is part of Cheesehead TV being a place where LiveX can experiment and try new things out, blah, blah, blah. We started a Packers trivia, live tr Packers trivia every day, Monday through Friday um, via YouTube. And all we did, you know, we hadn't, you know, the YouTube, we went to the YouTube API pulling hashtags. So we would have four answers, right, for each question. And you had to hashtag your answer into the chat. And the computer would pull the five quickest, you know, five most you know, quickest, correct answers. And then we would have a leaderboard, et cetera. And this is literally nothing, no stakes here. This is just people on the internet gathering at five, at the end of the day to have a good time uh, along. And the amount of vitriol and uh, very sternly worded emails I would get for people like, I got all the answers right and my name didn't appear and I got all this stuff. And that's why latency to me is like, okay, we're all this. I can't even imagine having people's money on the line. Like that's where you got to you got to imagine that, that is only going to become more and more important as gambling turns into this it already is, but turning into an even bigger business because everyone's on a different Wi-Fi, everyone's on a different internet speed, everyone's coming te technically from a different spot. And to how to like you make that uniform so you have a quote level playing field. To to me, that's going to be an amazing challenge to watch as things get even faster and even more immediate. 
Yeah, absolutely. We are uh, approaching, well, we, we're already delivering sub-second latency. Um, so it's just going to get better as more 5G networks roll out and uh, they're more prevalent for all the consumers. Um, you know, so as I mentioned before, technology marches on and it's continuing <laughs> to march on. What about other forms of interactivity with the fans that you, uh, you know, interactive TV for, for to, to coin a phrase or to steal a phrase? Um, what's there, how much interactivity do people want, do fans want in their experience versus the classic lean back and just watch the game? A ton. Um, that, that's what we're finding. You know, I, we like to view ourselves as like a, a it's a two-way conversation. It's a two-way experience with, with a lot of our programming, even our linear, linear programming. Um, and, you know, every single big noon Saturday, fans get to choose a segment on the show. So it's like fan produced TV. Um, in addition to having access on the digital side to all of our talent via asking questions um, that ultimately lead to some of our best VOD moments um, that are evergreen and live on well beyond that live experience that are some of the best stuff that we have. Um, from the, you know, the more technological side, um, we are producing bonus cameras. Um, so you can watch in car with any number of, of NASCAR drivers um, while the race is going on and fans get to vote on which drivers they, they want to see streaming on our app and our website, um, which is pretty incredible. So the amount of interactivity, I think is just going up um, and we continue to innovate along with the fans demands. <laughs> And that is so cool. I bet you got incredible feedback. I mean, like, I'm not even a big NASCAR fan, but the idea of riding in the car sounds awesome. We, um, we, we had a uh, we, we, technology called Command Center, which we had your traditional kind of drone shot, which was the hero cam. But we also had six or eight uh, helmet cams on it every time. We had 180 degree cameras. Uh, and then we had a ref camera as well. And so you could, in real time, bounce between any of those views. People used it mostly for replay, like this crazy Hail Mary that they would go, go to the player and watch how it might happen. Um, but, but yeah, we saw a, a lot of great feedback and I never wanted to watch NASCAR until right now. <laughs> <laughs> well, one of the things we've found is, uh, you know, it's, I completely agree with Kristen in the sense that like, you can't offer enough, like they're the people, the appetite is insatiable. Uh, but what is interesting is the, the need to offer, um, a wide variety of ways for fans to consume your content or connect with you, um, in the sense of like, we've got lots of different ways for people to come to Cheesehead TV in the sense of there are people who are all in and watch every single video and consume every single tweet that we put out and every uh, every Patreon hangout, that every Zoom hangout we do. And then there are people who just, you know, are kind of passers-by, et cetera, and they enjoy what we do, but they're maybe not in for the long haul, so to speak. And we want to make sure that we have something on offer for all of them. What's interesting to me is that like we started out at this idea a couple of years ago when we were doing we first started the watch parties like we do our little pre-show and we would tell people to send us pictures you know where are you watching the game tonight or today or yeah. whatever and that has grown and grown and into where like i can't i, I can't keep up with all of the entries so now we have this this spot in our pre-game show where we get people from brazil we got people in australia we got people in the philippines we got people all, literally all over the world checking in they're more excited about be, their little picture being seen on our show than they are for the game. And I've heard that repeatedly. And so now our next kind of iteration of that is we're going to have, we call it carry the G. We're going to have people upload. We're going to have a spot on the site where people can upload their tailgate, essentially like video from their tailgate. And then we can kind of hopefully expand into little video peaks into Brazil, the Philippines, Germany, London, et cetera, just to keep, connecting to people because i think that's what we love right the idea of sports and community and hey man this person's on the other side of the world but they're just as excited about this yeah. event as i am and i think you said you know something you said i think was accurate you said it was insatiable what we found under the course of our first season was that it was really a matter of like onboarding and tutorialization right we built like that's a good point right video shows around the league and as vectors in to kind of know the guys and understand like they're they're doing this crazy thing in the middle of a global health crisis and a, <laughs> you can call it so they had we had like a barber shop show for example we had a celebrity barber come in and cut their hair 
And throughout the course of it, they're all it's all purpose built for interactivity. So we do a bunch of things with with chat, with asking that can continue the, the, the conversation. Again, we're making bets and stuff. And as we saw people getting acclimated to it, and we started onboarding it, we would see them get pulled through the funnel and really start engaging with like every facet of it, right? Because it's pretty pretty frictionless to call a play here or there, but to show up in one of these shoulder content shows and be really be authentically part of the conversation. Exactly. Um, it was just a matter of, again, repeating that that type of stuff is possible. And when it was, people engaged really deep level. That's the other thing, right? When other people, I mean, that happens all, uh, every week it gets more traction because people see it. Yeah. And they're like, wait a second. I want to do, I want to be part of this. I want, like, I do that. Let me be part of it, man. That That's just snowballs every time. No doubt. Pam, I've watched you nodding your head here, uh, and I'd like to 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 find out a little bit more about what Fubo is doing to encourage fan interactivity. Now, I think it's all going to be, you know, based off the new technology that we're building out. Um, I wish I could talk more about it, but I'm not allowed. <laughs> oh, okay. All right. <laughs> she could tell us, but then we'd be all. Yeah, have to shoot me, you guys, so I can't okay. do. It. All right. Uh, but I do like to Aaron's point. I do love, uh, and I know Fox does it beautifully. Um, just the, just the fan interaction. I mean, I think it actually warms my heart when I, when I see like the pictures and like people sending all that stuff in, um, I'm definitely going to incorporate that in some of our originals as well. Um, and like you said, it's a community, right? Everyone lo loves to feel a part of a community. And I think that's a really cool way for us to do it. So yeah, I like that whole stuff. I think no one, does it better or did it first um, than the NBA and TNT guys? Um, the way they integrate fans into their show and and make that such a seamless part of it that doesn't feel forced. Um, oh, and it I helps that they've got like awesome. magic on stage. Those, those guys together <laughs> are just incredible. They're that's they're incredible. Awesome. They're amazing. <laughs> like that's not fair. It's not fair that they've got that chemistry uh, in that product the production. They're they are absolutely amazing. How do all of these interactive elements, these gamification elements, um, how do they work to enhance the storytelling that is always going to be part of what what we what you all do? I mean, part of the story, I mean, the, the game is the story, perhaps, but how do these enhancements help with the storytelling without, and maybe this, maybe this isn't even an issue, maybe it just shows that I'm old, without distracting from the story? It's funny you say that because I struggled with that for a, quite a while when we first kind of started making Cheesehead TV like a real concern. The idea of the, the game is the story, right? The players is the story. Like, wh why would anyone be interested in anything having to do with Cheesehead TV, myself, ha what have you? But it's there, man. It, and I can't remember who said it, but someone mentioned, uh, you know, a younger audience, the kind of a divide in like, you know, where you find people maybe are reclining in their lazy boys and just watching the game, but there is a whole generation that just doesn't even know that existence. And that was kind of the aha moment for me. And I'm sure Patrick has kind of the, 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 finds this a lot in the sense of like, there's a whole generation that wants their hands in the pie. And yeah, those guys are playing a game and I'm really excited about it, but there's so much more. There's so such a wide palette as far as engagement and storytelling and things that can augment the game and viewers and fans experience of the game in a way that like when I was growing up, you know, journalists stood on the side and like they weren't part of the story and they just told what happened and blah, blah, blah. That is so blown out of the water at this point. Like I, I like I said, I struggled with it. I still do in the sense of like people want to know every like anything that happens with the Packers. They want my take on it. It's like, I don't know. The guy's like a fifth string running back. I don't care. And like they're like, no, but he could really challenge him. Blah, blah, blah. It's like that. But that's because they have a connection to me and that again is a really kind of hard thing to work your head around but uh it is very real and it is very generational i've been on a webinar for, with you for 45 minutes and i feel like i have a connection to you here and so i get there you, you go <laughs> that's what i'm talking about see my hearts and minds one at a time <laughs> Patrick, I'm talking about. <laughs> but Eric, what your question for me i think we saw it a couple different things i think it doesn't distract from the the story if anything it augments and then creates new ones so we, we did this thing where we had to did, you know, we had camps and combines to find players. And then we did a casting call with like a casting pass. We hired a casting agent to find the guys with the biggest personalities that lit up when a camera turned on that wanted to create content outside of game day and engage with fans. And then we saw this virtuous circle, right? So, you know, as they're out there, you know, 
cre creating content on Twitch and being active on social and playing Madden with their fans and those types of things, we saw their number get called more on game day, right? So there's the story changes. They're actually getting more reps on game day because they've built a relationship with a, uh, a fan in a way that never existed before. And then if you think, if you fast forward this, something we're anticipating, we've got leaderboards by teams, right? So if you play the tapes forward two or three or four years, you, you can say, look, I want to get that Pam, she's killing it. And they're, you're seeing not only players getting recruited to other teams, but fans, because she's been number one on the leaderboard for you know three seasons and we need to get her and, and have her be part of our, our fandom. And so I think it creates new storylines and new opportunities for, you know, for you know, experiences. I love that. It's also like we're we're dealing with a different audience these days. We're dealing with a distracted audience, right? They're they're scrolling through Twitter um, while they're watching the game. They're they're doing other things while they're watching the game. Um, so if you're not taking a slice of that pie, you're losing. Um, so you have to create a more interesting experience for them in order to kind of grab that attention. Um, if you're just providing them a, a base level of experience, they're going to look elsewhere for additive experiences. Um, and I mentioned earlier, like I, I think some of the, the storytelling that comes from these questions that fans are asking of our talent and our, our star power guests, like that's the stuff that goes well beyond that live window. And the story that um, Joe Montana told about calling, he used to call his wife when he would get nervous on the sideline during games. I love that. Um, from that so from the, the, the phone that they're not, you know, it's not even supposed to dial out. Um, that story continues to accrue views and engagement and lives on forever on our platforms. That, and I think that's super valuable for us. Well, it's cool because I feel like that made him real, right? Like you yeah, saw, right. all everyone thought he was that. Multiple. Joe Cool. Super he was Joe Cool, cool right? Joe Cool, right? right? But he got nervous and called his wife. That's mm -hmm. freaking amazing. <laughs> I mean, I love that. I love that. Like, my whole thing is like the voice of the athlete. Even like, you know, I have Gilbert Arenas and um, I told you T.O. and Hatch now and um, uh, probably up to six more things joining, uh, six more vodcasts joining our team. Um, I'm more interested in like what they're like, like here, you know what I mean? Not like their persona that all of America sees where there's so there's studs on the field or on the court, but this is like the real stuff. I, I've always, that's always been like a passion of mine. So um, I agree with you hundred percent, like getting that out there, that that's important and fans dig it. They do. Yeah, very much. For what it's worth, Joe's an investor and advisor here and I still get starstruck every time I'm around him. So just by like, it's not worn off if that makes any sense. I'm like, <laughs> nice. For sure. cool. Yeah. It's great. For sure. Well, we've got about 10 minutes left and I want to talk more about the technology that enables all of this. Right. And so let's start with, with Dave again. Um, you know, what, what technologies are you using uh, or do you see as necessary to produce these on-screen interactive second screen, third screen innovations? Well, I think it's just the ability to be portable and to go virtually anywhere. It, it removes all the barriers, right? Um, so you can follow a, uh, an athlete uh, as he walks through the tunnel into the locker room and you can talk to him. Uh, you don't have to worry about uh, wiring a camera or, or anything like that. You can uh, get on a bus, you know, ride with the team on the bus to the airport after a game. Um, you know, those, those types of things that behind the scene things that are not available, um, and really hadn't been until the advent of this technology, just, you know, unique camera views, unique use cases, putting, putting encoders in race trucks that are going across the desert at hundred plus miles an hour. Um, you know, when we did that two years ago, nobody had ever seen, I mean, Obviously NASCAR has in-car cameras, right? IndyCar has in-car cameras. No one had ever seen live in-car camera from a trophy truck out in the middle of the desert. This was the first time that it was done. And the uh, response was, was huge. It was a huge success. Uh, you know, so just being able to open up those types of things and, and then the access to the, obviously to the athletes, you know, uh, being able to follow them, as I said before, but. To, you know, really just uh, knocking down the barriers uh, to be able to, to gather content from virtually anywhere at any time. 
I think one thing that's important to remember on the technology front, it's funny because working with a technology services company like LiveX, like she said, TV does, you know, we utilize every bit of it. Every, uh, we just did a draft show where we were using the brand new Kairos uh, system from Panasonic and VVCR that we had produced. And it was all, Corey was in Green Bay. I was in the New York studio, the height of technology. But one of the most engaging, most viewed things I did all week was some, you know, Packers news broke and I just whipped out my phone and did a quick video while literally while I'm walking and I threw it up on YouTube and it got more engagement than anything I did that week. To me, I, I always try and remember there was the, JJ Abrams, I think, had a great quote about and I'm paraphrasing, but in a sense of like he always gets asked like people, young people, I want to be a filmmaker. I want to do what you do, et cetera. He's like, man, you are so far ahead of the game because you were born when you were born. You know, back in the day when we were having an imagination about sports, about I used to like have my own fake radio calls of Packers games, you know, you can literally do that now as a kid with the technology afforded you just with a simple phone or a computer or what have you. It really is about finding tools to tell stories, but it can be any tool like you don't have to be limited. And I think the Internet has done a great job of kind of rooting that out like technology is always going to be a very serviceable thing, but it, it's not a limitation. It can't be. You can't allow it to be. To me, that's more than anything the most important point. Aaron, something you said was super interesting in, in terms of like the, the most rudimentary raw version of, of your content, a cell phone video, talking about something that your specific audience cared about was the thing that got the most engagement. And that's something that we lean into really, really hard at, at Fox Sports and, and specifically on the digital side is social listening um, is a huge tenant of what we do. Because if, if you're talking about something that no one cares about and it has all these bells and whistles and the best graphics and the best remote production in the world and on a beautiful shiny LED set, um, is anyone going to hear it if they don't care about it? Uh, no. So we, we really lean into the social listening aspect and, and that part of our, our technological advancements and arm our talent with the things that people are actually talking about and interested in hearing them talk about to make our content go the farthest it possibly can. And having a thick skin for the haters out there. Yeah. I, I don't know what you're talking about, Pamela. My Twitter feed is a bastion of glory and love. I don't know. There's, oh my there's God. no, no I dream. I would never dream of like, even as a kid, like saying something mean to someone. Oh and goodness. it's like, oh, it's okay. It's and now I have kids who I have to look at their Twitter. Oh my God. No, 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 thanks. But you know, it's, it's what you said. I, I agree with that. The, what you said, Aaron, about like, I think there's something to be said about that kind of content that has a lower production value that's just like it lands as candid and authentic and I think Pam you said a humanized show like that I think that um, it comes across as real and I think like we've I, I really like the idea of Christmas giving my takeaway is doing better social listening but like also I think just like arming the athletes to be able to create their own content and build and redefine that relationship with fans no doubt we have got a great question uh, from the audience and it it, it actually dovetails with some of the things that, that everyone here just said. What open content platforms like YouTube, Vimeo, Twitch, et cetera, or social platforms do you feel can be used to bring uh, attendees, viewers to your proprietary, you know, what things outside of your control can be used to bring folks inside where you want them to be? Do they have a value to companies that are that are heavily invested in your own proprietary or paid content, or are they a distraction and competition? That's interesting because that's kind of what I was touching on before when I said um, when I was talking about the way different people come to us in different ways, and there's an audience everywhere, right? Whether it is YouTube, whether it is Twitch, whether it is Facebook or what have you, there those people are kind of existing there, and you will eventually. I guess I want to say convert them into uh, hopefully someone who does come to your website, who does come to your own property. Obviously, there are always going to be people who are only going to experience you uh, on YouTube or Facebook or what have you. The, the trick for me is like just being consistent with your programming, finding enough difference between each of them where not everything on Facebook is on YouTube, not everything that's on Twitch is going to be on your Twitter feed, etc., eventually people want to discover more about you if you're creating compelling content that keeps them coming back for more. 
to me, that's the whole trick. It's not about, okay, I've got to keep hammering this one message home on all the platforms. If you are creating consistent content that connects, people are going to want to inherently find out more about you, your product, your whatever message you're trying to send, however, whatever the end goal is, right? Whatever your home base is, people are going to search you out. They're going to find you. So I don't think there's, I mean, this is just my experience, but I don't think there's a trick of, oh, YouTube's the best way to convert people or Facebook's the best way. There's people everywhere. You know, there was a time when we tried to chase the Facebook audience or what have you, but there's people everywhere. You're going to find people wherever you go. It's just a question of having compelling content on a consistent basis. That's the, to me, that's the bedrock. Yeah, it's about creating an ecosystem, right? Yes, that, that that's there, a great way to put it, yes. There, there's a life cycle of, of consumption that um, if, if you're not reaching the fans that are on that platform, um, you're, you're not going to reach them at all. Uh, you, you run that risk by eliminating an entire platform from your content strategy. Um, so definitely don't view it as competition, but, but more of like a, a funnel, if you will. Like if you're, if you're not fishing where the fish are and getting that fan, um, fans attention in some capacity, you're losing out on that ground, um, in, in our opinion, in our strategy. And you'll be hungry if you're looking for fish for dinner, right? <laughs> Exactly. Well said. Absolutely. Uh, that was that was a great conversation. Thank you all so much for taking the time today for talking about the technology, the content, the stories, the people that make this all uh, that make this all possible. And uh, I couldn't be happier having spent the last hour with you. So thank you to everyone. I would like to thank again Live You for sponsoring. Uh, this panel and for making a lot of the content that we're talking about uh, for enabling the creation of that content. Um, we will be back again in a little over a half hour with our last session of the day that focuses completely on remote production. And uh, I'd like to thank again our diamond sponsor Signian for making this whole thing possible. So thank you all. Thank you. Bye guys, it was fun. Thank Thanks. When the director calls action. And action. When the game is on. It's good. Or it's time to save the universe again. See, media Shuttle is there. Trusted by more than 25,000 media companies, Media Shuttle delivers, making it easy and secure to send any size file anywhere fast. The journey begins with Media Shuttle portals, customized and branded for any project and designed to be so easy, your end users will love it. All while giving operations teams complete control through a simple yet powerful admin interface. Add users, set permissions, customize file delivery specs, and report on all activity. Blast off with proprietary acceleration technology. Media Shuttle moves your content anywhere in the internet connected world at hyper speeds. Along the way, your files are protected. Our commitment to enterprise grade security has made Media Shuttle a preferred tool with Hollywood studios, major sports leagues, broadcasters, and more. With Media Shuttle, your files are never handed over to Signiant. File movement is orchestrated between the end user's workstation and your storage, whether on prem or in the cloud. Your IT team simply provisions your storage, connecting it to the Media Shuttle cloud service, and Signiant handles the rest. Get started on your Media Shuttle journey today. A journey without limits.